We're going to look at the minimum weight spanning tree problem in connection with linear programming. We are given a connected graph G with node set V and edge set E, and edge weights given by the vector C with entries indexed by elements of E. We claim that this integer linear programming problem here is a formulation of the minimum weight spanning tree problem, and we are going to see why that's the case. So a bit of notation to unpack. If F is a subset of E, then X of F denotes the sum of all the entries of X indexed by elements in F. And kappa of F denotes the number of components of the graph with node set V and edge set F. So first of all, we'll show that if you take an incidence vector of a spanning tree, it satisfies all these constraints. Let X be the incidence vector of a spanning tree. That is, XE is 1. If E is in the tree, then 0 otherwise. And clearly, C transpose X gives the weight of the spanning tree. And X being 0, 1 is not negative everywhere and has integer components. Because the tree is a spanning tree, the number of edges is 1 less than the number of nodes. So this equality is satisfied by X. Now let's look at X of A. And here, we let F denote the set of edges E such that X of E is 1. So X of A is going to be the cardinality of A intersect F. And because F is the edge set of a spanning tree, A intersect F cannot contain any cycle. So the graph with node set V and edge set A intersect F must be a forest. And that means the number of edges must be the number of nodes minus the number of components of this graph. But this is at most the number of nodes minus the number of components of the graph with node set V and edge set A. Because A intersect F is a subset of A, and adding edges cannot decrease the number of components. And so X satisfies all these constraints and is a feasible solution. Now we're going to show the reverse direction. So we take X to be a feasible solution and we want to show that X is the incidence vector of a spanning tree. Let's take an edge E. Then by this inequality, we know X E is at most the number of nodes minus the number of components in the graph with node set V and edge set containing just E. And if you look at the graph, let's say with five nodes, and if you throw in an edge, because it joins exactly two nodes, the number of components is one less than the number of nodes. And so XE is most one. And since X has only integer entries, X is a zero one vector. We now let f denote the set of e such that x e is 1. And we claim that the graph with node set v and edge set f has no cycles. And to see this, suppose that there is a cycle. Let's call this c. Now if we look at the graph with node set v and edge set c, it has the number of nodes minus the number of edges components that consist of a single node, and the cycle itself from the remaining component. So what that means is, if we look at x of c, which is precisely the cardinal of c, it is certainly bigger than the cardinal of c minus 1, and we can rewrite this as the number of nodes minus the number of nodes minus the cardinal of c plus 1, but this is the number of nodes minus kappa of c, which contradicts this inequality when a is equal to c. So we have proved this claim, and so this graph v, f is a forest, and the number of edges that it has according to this equality is exactly the number of nodes minus 1. And so this is in fact a tree. 
and it's a spanning tree because its node set is the same as the node set of the graph G. And so we have shown that if we take any feasible solution, it is the incidence vector of a spanning tree. So in summary, we have an integer linear programming formulation for the minimum weight spanning tree problem. Since this is an integer linear programming problem, we can relax the problem by dropping the integrity requirement. So the linear programming relaxation will look like this. And it turns out that this linear programming problem solves the minimum weight spanning tree problem exactly in the following sense. It has an optimal solution that is the incidence vector of a spanning tree. We're going to take a closer look at this relaxation in the next video.